So you could be forgiven for thinking that some football trades are very complex, require lots of statistics and analysis. But actually some opportunities are really simple. And one happened on the first day of the Premier League season. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Please like and comment on the video below. That will allow me to produce better quality videos and more of them in the future. So at the start of a football season, it's very hard to figure out who's playing well and who isn't and so on and so forth. And certainly on the first day of the season, or the first few matches, you may get a couple of weird results that occur. And in fact, we had all sorts of funny games on the first day of the season. But the match that uh, most caught my interest was the match against Chelsea and Burnley. And that was because it threw up um, a relatively risk-free trade. Well, there's no such thing as a risk-free trade, but a well-managed trade, a, a trade that had well-defined risk within it. So I pretty much ignored the match because there was no way I was going to trade it because obviously Chelsea were going to win. Burnley didn't win. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure they didn't win a single match um, away from home in the whole of last season. But of course, Chelsea uh, pretty much blew away the league last year. So there was absolutely no chance of this being anything other than a resounding home win. But it was on the first day of the season. So anything could happen. And obviously, I'm saying that with the benefit of hindsight. However, there were opportunities for a good trade within that match um, that were fairly clear uh, when you first looked at uh, what was going on within that particular match. And as with most things, the opportunity for the trade came through uh, a setup, um, a, a, a situation that occurred that delivered an opportunity to us. So the setup on this particular match was at half time. Um, obviously, as I was uh, busy trading, I could see various scores coming in and so on. And, you know, you saw that uh, Burnley were doing quite well against Chelsea. So at half time, I took the opportunity to dive into the match, have a look at it and see what was going on. Now, what was going on was that Burnley were 3-0 up at Stamford Bridge at half time, which was completely unexpected. Now, the away team score much more frequently than you would typically expect. And it happens in all sports. Things happen much more frequently than you would imagine. And the outsiders takes the lead in the first game of tennis or in football or, you know, the outsiders tend to um, uh, go into those situations much more frequently than you'd expect. But 3-0 up at half time away from home um, is a highly unusual situation. But uh, when you look at that particular match, um, the odds on Burnley started up very high, but basically after the first goal they would have come in, second goal, and by the third goal, because three goals uh, to one team in a match is more than you expect in most matches in its entirety, their odds had crashed in uh, to 106. So we're faced with a situation where Chelsea were 3-0 down at home, Burnley um, were 3-0 up, so what was going to happen in the second half? Now, looking at the stats at half-time, uh, it turned out that Chelsea hadn't had a single shot on target, uh, which was quite amazing. So, is that a condition that you would expect to continue to happen in the second half? Would they go in to the dressing room at half-time and the manager would go, oh, you know, uh, that was a bit disappointing, was it? Never mind, I'm sure things would be better in the second half. No. <laughs> they would do whatever they could to turn the match around. And at 3-0 down, you know, what do you have to lose, really? And if you actually looked at the stats a little bit closer, you would have seen that Burnley had four shots and had happened to score with three of them, and yet possession was heavily shifted in one direction. So yes, Chelsea should have had more shots on target. Um, Burnley were a little bit lucky, probably didn't deserve three goals, and Chelsea were going to come back into the match in the second half. It is a game of two halves. I know it's a cliche, but it's absolutely true. When I was looking at a variety of different types of analysis, it turned out that what happened in the first half tended to shape what was happening in the second half. And so, you know, if a team is 2-0 up, they'll change their method of uh, play in the second half and so on. Plus you get the opportunity for substitutions and all of these things. So it really is a game of two halves. So what trade could we have done at this particular point? Well, the most obvious trade, you could back Burnley at 106 and hope that they go on to win the match, but you're gonna to have to suffer for 45, 50 minutes to see if your 106 shot actually comes in. And of course, we're expecting Chelsea to come back into the match at some particular point or another. So, laying Burnley at 106, it, it's an unusual sort of thing to do in a certain sense, in that you're sort of saying um, they're not going to win from 3-0 up, which even in that particular scenario against Chelsea, you'd have to say that they've got a fair chance of that happening. But of course, we're trading here, we're not placing a bet, 
what we're saying here is we're going to expose ourselves to risk for a period of time given a number of scenarios and we're expecting a payoff. So what was the situation that we were looking at in this particular match? By laying Burnley at 106, what we're saying is that if Burnley go on to win, then they'll obviously end up at 101 to lay. But basically 6% time decay will take place over the course of 45 minutes. So we're exposing ourselves to a, a, a negative 6% return on that trade over the course of 45 minutes. But let's throw in a couple of scenarios. That's assuming that absolutely nothing happens in the match. If Burnley score again, then obviously that would go down to 101 and your trade would be lost. But Burnley with the 3-0 lead, what do you think their instructions were at halftime? It's like, well, lads, we've got a great chance of winning this match. Let's just defend deep and, you know, we'll, we'll walk away with a win here if we just don't do anything stupid. And if you actually look at what happened in the match, that's pretty much what they did, which is pretty much what you'd expect from a team 3 and up at half time. There's no incentive to attack massively from there, but there's a huge incentive to defend. So they were probably going to sit back, maybe they would concede a goal, but basically by being stubborn and difficult they could probably get away with a win. And you know what did they have to gain by throwing people up the pitch and trying to get that fourth goal? Very little is the honest answer. So our play within this particular match was that the odds would gradually de decay to 101 by the end of the match. But if there was a Chelsea goal then obviously the odds would jump up and we would see a profit. Now, as we went into the second half, the perfect scenario for you would be for that goal to arrive early. And in fact, what actually happened was that we didn't get that early goal. But that's essentially what you're looking at. You're basically saying, you know, it's going to start 106, it's going to stay at 106 for ages, and then it'll tail off and eventually expire at 101. But if a goal comes, then the odds will jump up. How do you know what the odds are going to be and when and so on? Go on to Bet Angel, click on the soccer icon, and use Soccer Mystic, because that would give you a view on if a team is 3-0 up at half time, what are their odds you know, at a certain point given certain scenarios. That gives you that payoff, tells you how much you potentially could lose and how much you potentially could win if that goal comes and when that goal comes. So if we examine what actually happened in this match, the goal didn't come until much later in the match, uh, which was a shame because we were looking for that early goal. However, despite the fact that we laid at 106 and we had to wait ages and ages and ages and ages for Chelsea to break down Burnley, when that goal came, it did actually shift to a profit. So if we look at the moment at which we laid um, at 106, you can see what the market looked like then. And then if we look at what happened immediately after goal, you can see that despite the, the fact that the goal came very late, we were still able to profit from that. Now, the real money would come if a second goal came. But again, in this match, the second goal became so late that, in fact, the odds declined again and then shifted up to more or less where they were when that first goal came in. So again, it was in a profitable position, but it wasn't like a mega trade. It wasn't something that, that paid off spectacularly. The perfect scenario would have been if Chelsea scored two quick goals early in the second half and then the odds would have shifted dramatically and they would have started to decline again but of course the chance of a third Chelsea goal in sort of 30 or 40 minutes would have been quite high so eventually that could have actually gone off um, at, at a much much bigger price and you could have made a lot of money but what you are trying to do with this trade is expose yourself to that potential payoff for as long as possible um, and only accepting a very small downside in this case you know if you laid a thousand pound at 106 you'd only lose 60 quid but we were looking for a potential payoff at bigger values above that level when Chelsea started to score and to try and come back into the match. Now, if you're smart, what you'll do is, and especially on a 3-0 on a scoreline, is when that first goal goes in, you trade a little bit back to the market because then that gap um, to the potential loss or making less money is much, much bigger. So what you're effectively doing is you're buying yourself a much, much bigger window of opportunity. You're saying, okay, you know, that first goal's gone in. What I'm going to do is trade some of that profit back into the market. I'll hold my position open for a bit longer. And that extends the window that I've got for that second goal to be scored. And th having a long window to that second goal is ideally what you need because that provides an, an, another payoff. Now, in this particular match, what happened was that Chelsea only managed to score two goals and the second goal was quite late. There was still a payoff uh, for that to occur. Uh, but you could have even kept hold of your position there just in case that extra goal came in a little bit later. And they also had a guy red card as well. In fact, they had two red cards during the match. It was a disastrous first match for Chelsea. Uh, but um, nonetheless, you know, it illustrated a nice little trade. 
we didn't get a particularly big payoff on this particular match, but there will be other opportunities like this as the season progresses. And your objective when doing this trade is to limit your downside. We knew we were restricted to a negative 6% on the downside because we were laying at 106. But by creating a position on that, we knew that we had a certain amount of time for that 60 pound uh, to vanish from our account. And in that time, if a goal was scored, the odds would jump up. And if they scored again, it would jump up even higher. And it was more a question of staying in the market for a period of time for that goal to go in. If it came in too late, we wouldn't make any money. But if it came in early, which it didn't on this occasion, um, we would make a lot more. But on this occasion, we still managed to make profit, despite the fact that the goal and the second goal came quite late within the match. So effectively, what you're doing when you're trading this way is you're trying to buy yourself a window in which you think a goal will be scored. And preferably, you want the biggest possible window that you could have. So 3-0 down at half time. You could lay them at 106, give yourself exposure to a large window. When that first goal came in, it would have made sense to trade some of that back because that just lengthened your window a little bit further. But uh, yeah, it was an interesting first game of the season for Chelsea. I'm sure there will be other opportunities like that. And using the technique that we've described here, then you should be able to exploit them.